Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Johnson Sun Min Miller. Howdy, friends. So here's uh, at least one of you is about to take precepts. And uh, I think maybe one or two of you had taken some uh, recently. I'm not sure about that. And uh, I don't think any of you uh, who are about to or have taken them recently are particularly new to Buddhism and you might have already taken precepts in another order. In fact, you might already be in, in ordained somewhere. But nonetheless, I'm going to take this as a great opportunity to talk about uh, one of my favorite practices and the practices that's most important to me, which is the precepts. Uh, I frequently return to uh, precepts, reevaluating how they function in my life. Um, I, and I recite them every, my all of my precepts every morning and wedged in between uh, the three refuges and the, um, the great bodhisattva bells every morning before I meditate. Um, so there's a uh, think of, of um, precepts in some ways, a, a, a uh, beginning of practice, the middle practice and the end practice, you know, as a uh, beginning practice really fitting well with, um, the second of the Eightfold uh, Path, uh, Right Resolve, is commitment to engaging life in, uh, in a new way, in a way that where we uh, uh, think more about care for ourselves and others, in a way that we um, find ways to reduce harm we cause ourselves and others, to commit to living in a way that's um, a cultivation of empathy, that leads to a sort of spontaneous care for others and for ourselves that goes beyond mere precepts. So there's that step, you know, resolving to live a new way. Um, the next three paths, right at speech, right action, right livelihood, all of these are enactments of these in the world. Um, and I think it's quite wise of, uh, of you know, of Wanji and then lots of modern teachers and orders to expand the uh, more traditional uh, precepts to being more than simply prescriptions. You know, that not just merely, uh, you know, thou shalt not kill sort of thing, but uh, vowing to support all living creatures and to refrain from killing. You know, there's a lot more going on there. And so uh, with each of those broadened precepts, uh, you know, it's not like some rule that you can learn. It's like, okay, I'm just going to stop drinking now. You know, maybe you do that, but um, as well, but I think, you know, the way I, when I first took my precepts, I had to sort of map out one by one how each of them operated in my life. Like how, what are the ways in which addictive behavior operates in my life? The ways in which um, those, or the ways in which intoxication operates in my life, the way that it affects harms me or, or affects others or, you know, not, you know, you know, who have I killed lately, but more, you know, what are the ways in which I, you know, in the world thoughtlessly contribute to the harm, including even the killing of others. And so thinking about things like, well, you know, what am I, how often do I drive a car? You know, what are all the ways that I'm pumping CO2 into the atmosphere? You know, the less I do that, the more I am uh, supporting all living beings um, you know, do I need to figure out the ways in which I you know, participate in, you know, in harming others through, um, you know, misogyny or white supremacy? What are the ways that I participate in that? And then how do I, you know, stop doing that? How do I stop harming people and, or, and, and living beings and start supporting them and, you know, in a much broader way? And all of this leads us away from mere, you know, it's not just right speech, right action, right livelihood, but it's also right mindfulness because then if, um, you know, if it's, you know, if you, okay, if you're going to go out in the yard and chop off the chicken's head to eat, to eat the chicken, you know, when you're about to kill that thing, right? But it gets a lot harder when you think about, you know, the broader effects that we have, especially through the interconnectedness of, uh, of industrial societies, um, you know, where our cravings and our or just our mindless, you know, our samskara, our, you know, mindless habits and so forth, the ways that those can cover up our awareness of the things that we're doing that are, 
you know, you know creating harm for others and failing to support all living creatures. Um, and so it's, precepts are also this constant practice of mindfulness, you know, that you can't, you know, if we're living on autopilot, um, according to our samskara, um, you know, we're, we're just going to be missing all those thousands of opportunities throughout the day to, um, to engage our precepts. You know, so they're a 24 hour a day practice. Um, and I find myself returning to them frequently. You know, saying that if you, you know, you get a new job or, you know, have a child, um, or your, you know, um, when your, your older parents moves in with you, uh, you move to a new house. There's so many things that could really disrupt your, your, uh, general pattern of life. And when you do that, well, you might have to reconsider your, your, um, your precepts, you know, what new behaviors are you engaged in? You know, there's that new person in the household, you know, are you, you know, you got to rethink right speech for example, because you know, you're going to have new ways of relating through people with, uh, with speech. Um, and so we've got to constantly reevaluate the precepts as our, our, uh, there's changes in our lives. And it's not just that. You, know, you can't do it all at once. There's all these different layers to it. And so, um, you know, you might, you know, take the precepts the first time, sort of map out one by one how they each operate in your life, and you start changing behaviors, you know, eliminating some patterns and starting to build up new ones, new, uh, more, more skillful patterns. Um, and then, you know, you know, you go back and reevaluate them a few months later or a year later and be like, oh, wow, there's this whole other layer to this. I didn't even know what I was, that I was doing, some other, you know, intoxicating or, or addictive behavior or some other pattern of, of, um, of harmful speech or something and you just you know I find myself I just keep digging go back continually reevaluate keep digging and um, reaffirm for myself the the relevant precept and keep going at it even deeper um, one by one working through the layers you know so I see taking the precepts is the, the beginning of, of practice um, about uh, breaking some habit patterns, volitions, uh, samskara. It's also about creating new ones, new patterns, uh, cultivating a life in which empathy becomes uh, a new pattern. Um, that um, instinctual or, or spontaneous way of living that uh, to reduce harm and to, and to care for others. Uh, that, and again, that goes beyond precepts as, as proscriptions, but instead becomes things that we uh, come to embody through new helpful habitual patterns. And so the, the precepts, they're the, the first practice, they're the middle practice, the ongoing practice, they're the, on, the, the end practice. So for me, this has been among the most important of my practices because this is how we engage others in the world. Um, so for those of you who just have just taken them or are about to take them, um, uh, fantastic. So um, enjoy.